I polished up my Ascension Day homily last Sunday. Then I tore it up on Tuesday afternoon. Senseless, mindless murder down the road of the innocent. Nineteen children, two adults, one perpetrator. When catastrophe happens anywhere in the world, we all grieve. And we all ask, Lord, why? What now? I've been praying like St. Paul all week, moaning, groaning. Well, I can't answer why, but I can take a stab at what now. Let's start with Christ's words from last Wednesday's Gospel, written by St. John. Jesus said, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. No words can help the people who've lost friends, children, brothers, sisters. It won't work. And theologians write books about the problem of evil. They confront the critical question in their minds, how can an all-good God allow so much evil in the world? But those theological answers may not help today. Our brothers and sisters in Sacred Heart Parish of Uvalde are living that critical question right now. Evil deeds happen. Sometimes they're caused by people who ordinarily look normal. The truth is, though, every person, every person listening to this, watching this video, if you're over the age of six, you have sinned. I have sinned. We are all sinners. Every one of us. When I stop saying yes to God's will and yield to temptation, I sin. Let's admit that. Jesus came, the sinless one, born of a sinless virgin, to lift us out of that foul swamp. Jesus came to save sinners. Without him and without the gifts he bestows, we would have no hope. Yeah, we could all feel the evil last week, done by a guy who no law could have stopped. And we could hear the evil one saying, I'm in control of this world. You have no hope. Ah, but let's turn to the words of Scripture. Our Lord said, Amen, I say to you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Even after that, even after his resurrection, even on the very day of his departure, we heard today his followers asking, Lord, will, at this time, will you restore the kingdom to Israel? They were still playing the same old game over and over again. They were playing this old record Lord, summon your angelic hosts and obliterate the Romans. Be the Messiah we want. Give us back the power, and we'll make the world perfect. There are still many, many leaders who tell us if we just pass some more laws, we'll stop all the violence. They say, hey, we can have a perfect society if you just give us control more of your lives. Well, Mussolini was the leader of such a society, and yes, he got the trains to run on time in Italy. But none of us would want to live in a country like that. External control of human behavior can solve some problems, but you have to have a police force that nobody's going to want to be around. The problem is not solvable in that way. We all know you can't solve a problem like that. The problem, the problem starts here and here in the human mind and heart. If minds and hearts are not in tune with the divine will, hands and feet 
and eyes and ears will be either doing self-serving and injurious actions or planning them when they get away with it. No external law can fix a problem that comes from deep within a twisted mind and heart. No hope? Oh no, we don't have to listen to that. We do have hope. That's why Jesus told us that it's for our own good that he ascended into heaven. Because only, only the Spirit of Jesus, the greatest gift of the Trinity, only that Spirit can enter and mold and inspire human minds and hearts, change us. Only the Holy Spirit has the power to transform our lives and make us into images of Jesus Christ. Make thousands, millions, even billions of human beings images of Christ. And moreover, the Spirit builds us into a community of faith, hope, and charity, taking action to spread his mission, to spread and change society for the better. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. That's what St. Paul is trying to tell us in the letter to the Ephesians today. He's praying for the Ephesians and for us to have a spirit of wisdom and revelation. He wants us to have enlightened hearts and minds. The heart and mind of Jesus himself. So we are confident that after this life, we will have the inheritance of God the Father all the rich glory and joy of being his sons and daughters. And with that joy, we can go into our schools and offices and neighborhoods to image Christ, to be Christ for other people, to care for the poor, create safe environments for children and other vulnerable people, to help the Holy Spirit to change minds and hearts, to have them look at us and say, Quiero ser como tú, I want to be like you. Ah, to make them want to be like Jesus. Without face masks, we can once again read the looks on a human face and know who needs us. When horrible events happen, as we know they will, we can step in to do what we can to help. Sometimes even just to listen to people talk to us. God will not force us to do good and avoid evil. No, he respects our human free will that he made. He doesn't want to force us to do good and avoid evil. But when good is done, we know his Holy Spirit has been active. When evil happens, he's working still, acting in us to help the victims and bring hope.